Okay, you even have had the tiniest bit of geek in you. You probably already know about this. They just released this, I saw it today or yesterday, that they injected a tiny molecule into a, a egg before it was even hatched. And they told that egg through programming of the DNA to grow feathers on the feet instead of just scales. Normally you have only scales. These ended up with feathers. Now I, I can explain the process to you and I will. It's a little bit complicated and it involves whoops, some of this DNA and uh, enzymes and proteins and, and bacteria and all of that. The RNA, this is the RNA. Ribosomes make RNA. That RNA is a program. Everybody's talking about RNA, vaccines, RNA. Well, that's what your body makes. Now, if your body makes it perfectly, which it usually does, you're in good shape. But if you make it wrong, you're not in good shape. That's what people are concerned about. And there is a valid concern there. And um, I'm not going to get into that. Because, uh, oh, boy, I can't go there. All right, tweak a couple of little genes, just a couple, and you turn scales into feathers. Well, let's look into that, which I did, and I will show you what I found. All right, this is what the chicken foot should look like. It ends up having feathers. Now, what they did was they snipped a piece of DNA and inserted another piece of DNA in there with some molecule. They don't explain what it was, but I, I'm pretty certain it will be some form of an enzyme protein. Let me show you what I think they did, and um, you can take it from there. Now, this is a, uh, a dragon scale from some kind of a very heavy-duty scale. I mean, it's big. And that's the little tab right there. You see that tab? That's where they lock in, lock in to the next scale, and they can wiggle around, and they have that slot. Now, there's blood right in there, because they have, they have to be fed with blood, and then, and then it's over here, too. And you can see the scale, and I can show you, as I will, the ones on Earth that have the exact same deal, the same layers like that, identical. Now, and this is a mud fossil goose, my pet goose, Caesar. There's his feathers. All feldspar and virtually all the things that were soft body turned with feldspar sealed them in because it was a hot water flood. We were almost impacted by Venus. That's just a fact. Now, we're going to, oh boy, I, should, I shouldn't have gone down that road, but I, that's just the truth. That's why all these mud fossils stabilized the way they did was because of that hot water flood. Basically, semi-cooked them, parboiled them. And then after laying in the waters and warming and, you know, just continuously circulating water through there, they stabilized. And then when they dried out, they just turned to stones. You know, they rehydrate. I, I can get blood out of these rocks. Well, I can show you. I can get blood out of even this dragon scale. I'll put it in a microscope and show you where the blood is. And I, I, I could put some uh, hydrogen peroxide on it and you'll see it. All right, so that's a little tab where it would have locked in. You see that little tab? I'm going to put this in a mi microscope. But that's that little tab where it locked in like this and it could slide underneath the next one where I don't know exactly how it worked but I'm sure somebody could figure it out <laughs> but I believe that's the little stem that held it right in there we'll put it in a microscope and see what it looks like put a little water on it let's see we'll take a look at the blood and this again whoa this one here is a, a giant feather I think I showed you that. Now these are the ones, I'm going to show you all these in some detail. This one here is the feather, it's the same feather just like this. And this came off of that chunk of feather that's on the side of the road. I mean the thing is gigantic. It's three inches thick almost. Or maybe even more. 
this is the only place I think there might be a little taste of blood. We'll look at that in the microscope too. Because inside here, feather is feather. You don't see, there's no real blood in here. Which is, is interesting. Because <laughs> blood has to be in everything. But I, could, I looked all around and I really couldn't find anything except that one little spot. So that's going to be of interest. Um, and then of course Caesar. And he's got his own spot. There's his artery up there. And there's his neck. If you get it in the right light, you can see. You see the little spot in the center there? He's turned to basalt. He was in a condition that laying flat like this. And he turned to basalt. All right, now, I don't think just playing around with genetic stuff is a good idea, but let me show you what they have been doing. All right, don't forget, these are the two chicken feet. Supposed to be scales, ends up with feathers. This is a strand of DNA. This is obviously a strand of DNA as well. And this is what they do, is they clip out a little tiny piece of the DNA and put another code in there. And that code is this code. All right? This is the way the DNA, DNA becomes programmed. RNA is basically half of the DNA and it starts wrapping itself. You have all these amino acids, they're different, all they are is program codes. That's all it is, is program codes. And they are the design of your body, they tell you how to run, they tell you what kind of sex you are, which is sort of an interesting thing too. And they can make you grow feathers on your feet if it was told early enough in your, your life cycle, this is how you're going to live your life. Now. That's, that's uh, scary. To me, that's damn scary. Alright. This is very simple. Don't confuse yourself. Don't think it's hard. It's very simple. All they are is little programs. It says you're going to be seven feet tall. You're going to be six feet tall. You're going to be whatever you're going to be. Skin color. Everything is built into these gene sequences. Now, they target this gene, which is just a little link of code, it's called the sonic hedgehog code gene, and um, wherever they name that. Now, it alters the embryonic chicken, so that means embryonic before it becomes alive, you know, it's basically in the, in the shell. It, it alters that, that growing fetus to grow feathers instead of scales on their usually squamous feet, which means scaly. The alteration is permanent. permanent. Once they're hatched, because they need to do this, they have to do this before they become permanently fixed for life. So once they're hatched, the chicken usually, uh, uh, chicken's unusually feathery feet stay that way for life. Now, consider the consequences of this, my friends. Let me show you something. You know, I was going to do this sort of uh, joking, like, you know, look what they're doing. They're making these birds into, like, feathers on their feet. Well, if they're doing just these little tiny snips, and apparently that's all they're doing, to modify that specific of a detail. We had dragons here that were miles and miles and miles. From here to here in North Africa is Typhon. He was written about in the ancient texts, and here he is up close, right there. There's Typhon. I've sh shown him so many times I can't count. There's his throat, and this is all the runoff of his decaying body. And here he is with his, his outline of his scaled body. Now, also, there's a Quetzalcoatl, which was feathered. Alright, so here we have scales, and I'm going to show you scales, and here we have feathers of Quetzalcoatl. There's Quetzalcoatl, he has feathers, and he does have feathers, of that there is no doubt. And um, here's the ones I have here, this is one I have here, I think I might have shown you already, but this is uh, almost exactly like a turkey feather, same colors and everything. You see it? It's pretty thick. Came right off of that spot right there, off of this right, right the side of the 
highway. And that isn't even big. There's another one coming off of Quetzalcoatl's head that's just absolutely amazing. And the Green Mountains are feathers from Quetzalcoatl. Alright, this is Quetzalcoatl, uh, not Quetzalcoatl, this is Typhon, runs all the way across North Africa. And he was attacking this gigantic fish here. Now you have Google Earth, I'm not going to stay on here forever. He was spitting stuff out of his dragon mouth. Right there, that's his dragon eye, flared flaming eye, that they talk about in Apollodorus, which I will read to you in a second. Here's all this unkempt stuff, and there's that thing they show in the parades in China. Here's his throat. What does the throat cons consist of? A tube that goes down, and that's how he eats things, and people, and gigantic things. I don't know what he ate. I'm telling you, look at the size of this thing. No. This is the, the scales. Down here is just runoff. That's just runoff. He's decaying in the desert. You see this? This is what happens. That's that's the runoff of like bloody decay. This over here is the runoff of a gash. He got gashed. I'll show you that. And that's exactly what it says in the ancient text. I'm going to show you. I'll read you in a second. So this is his head, all winged and unkempt. It comes down his throat, which is completely covered by dragon scales. You see these scales? You see them? Just look at him carefully. It's not an accident. This is his throat. You know, it's collapsed, but that's his throat. And this would have been the scales that protected his throat. And he could see that they're hinged so that he could move around. And that's why they're in like little blocky looks. Now, it comes all the way down here. And again, this is just runoff of, of body fluids. That's that flashy thing. And this right here, I believe, is the source of the venom. I've tracked it all the way back. And I believe that's what comes out all the way up here. The venom comes that yellow and comes right out of his beard. And that's where it comes out right here. And that is the venom is as nasty as it gets. You see that? You want to go slurping around in there? I wouldn't. Alright, and when it hit that fish, it just it ate right through his scales. You go down and look at his back, you can see, you can actually see the blood vessels and everything else. Look at that stuff. Isn't that nasty? Alright, well just to show you, that came down all the way down on the fish. And it ate right this far down onto him, through the fin, that's a big fin on his back. See, that's the fish. These are all the scales. These scales got eaten right into it, because that's the hump of his back of his... And all the way down, we're down into the blood vessels. You see that? That's blood vessels. They're bl that's an artery. These are blood vessels that bring the blood down to the capillaries and they service the tissues. When they're done servicing, they dump their contents into the vein duct. And the vein brings it back up to get cleaned up. And that's why you see all these black stripes through there. That's, that's the dump. But it ate right through. These still have scales on them. Now, that dragon as I showed you, has all fluffy stuff. And they, they look like feathery scales and so forth. And I can show you one thing. He does have dragon scales. This, as I showed you up there, but this close, this is like a dragon scale. I'm almost 100% certain of it. I don't know how big this dragon was, but there's a spot here on the back we're going to look at in a microscope. If you can see that little spot, I've not even talked about this before. But that's the tab, I believe, that lets this thing articulate around a little bit and it rocks in the cradle of another one. There's a blood vessel there, and there's a blood vessel there. I've looked at it in a microscope, and I do have the microscope going, so we'll probably take a quick look. But that's the tab that held it to the next... somewhere along that line. I don't know. It's like the way I tend and invest in the body, but I believe that was a pretty good-sized dragon scale. And, uh, of course, I think I showed you this, the feather. And we'll take a look at that to see if there's any blood in there. And of course, Caesar, my buddy, and 
down here is where I can show you the scales. So now, we know Quetzalcoatl has feathers. And these are the scales. Just like these. And they even have the same kind of stripes in them. You see those little stripes? That's what makes the scale so solid and rigid and tough. See all the little scales? Same as this. Now, so we have scales. We know that for a fact. Now, way down here, that is still his tail. And on the ancient maps, it shows it really flared out at the end. And I believe this could be feathers. So he could have both. Let's let this home in for a second. Now don't forget. This is his tail. Is that a feather or is that a scale? This is his tail. Is it a feather or a scale? That is the question du jour. This is the tip right here. That's the end of whatever this is. Now, what is the end of whatever that is, is this. What is that? I'm not sure. I would have to go with dragon scalish. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, there's too many little dragon scalish things here. So I guess that's still part of uh, a dragon part, part, but I don't know. What, what about this right here? Like that little line, what's going on there? I don't know. There's a lot to look at, but anyway, one way or the other, we know we got scales here. There's no question about that. I showed you the scales. We know we got scales up here. Now, feathers, we know we got over on the other side, Quetzalcoatl. So we got them both. They're splicing feathers into scales. Now, that's just one little tweak. What if you tweaked it and said, I want you to grow 100 million times bigger than you are, you would end up with this. And this is feathers, all the way up. Here's his head. This is Quetzalcoatl's head right here. All right. These are his beards that come down. Remember I showed you the beard on, um, well, he has beards, beards, uh, too. And this is the beard uh, on Quetzalcoatl. And this is his head. That's why it's a different color. The, the different tissues grow different colored plants. And the, the green is, is usually runoff of bloody stuff coming out of here. And that's why you see all these little rivulets around here. You see this? You see that? That's all the stuff running into there and having nowhere to go and creating all that bloody runoff. And they're using it to grow things. All right, but up here, this is like probably, a, 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 well, I know for a fact, it's some kind of different minerals up here, and the plants can't absorb them the way they can here, that's all. This is getting much more nutrition down here. Now, what about the feathers coming out of his head, which is his crown? This is his crown. And here it is right here. Now, again, they're taking feathers. And look at this. Coming right out of Little Rock. These are feathers, all right? And I can show you that very clearly. This one right here is a feather, a big, big, big feather. You see that? Let me turn off the light. That's just exactly like this feather here. Precisely. And there's, there's two of them here in a row. And the center is the center, just like this one. And it has these little lumpy looking things. You see it? <laughs> That's the same thing. And you get the feathers running off. 
Now this is a big creature and all the way up the east coast his body runs all the way snakes around all the way up all the way up all the way up all the way up and here's more of it up here and I think it goes a, a good distance past but these are nothing more than feathers as well you see so now we know we have feathers we know we have scales they're taking feathers and making the scales make feathers I don't like the whole idea of this switching around genes. I do not like it. It does not it's look like it's going to end well to me. I, I, this is not right. It's just not right. Okay, I just there's no better time to say it than right now. I just got this. It's just amazing. Just a few hours back. Uh, this guy says, I saw when flying over the Atlas Mountains, which is where Typhon is, in 2021, and asked God, does anyone else know? And he answered, yes. <laughs> Something about mud fossils, which I didn't understand until I saw your YouTube channel. He got a message from God saying, yeah, just go look at mud fossils. This is 2021. Now, so here we are, 2023. Amazing. And yes, I also heard from God. And this is an absolute, no question whatsoever, this is a fact. When I found the giants, and I came back and I started typing and looking up giants, it said, and this is exactly what it said, word for word, these things are for you to see and for others as a test. And Roger hit the floor. Not only that, and I'm serious, I'm not kidding you at all, this is not a lie whatsoever. I was sitting here in despair after years of trying to carry out, giving out this test. I didn't know would listen. I mean, absolutely nobody. And, you know, I have one or two people here, there, I'm, I, but it was just nothing but attacks. So anyway, I'm sitting here in despair. And I, I hear from behind me, I actually, I think I actually said out loud, God, I can't do this. I can't, there's no way I can do this. You want me to give this test? I can't give the test. Nobody will listen. And he said, look in Morocco. And I said, hmm. So I looked in Morocco, and sure enough, I found Typhon. I mean, instantly. And I had been looking in there. Look at this. This is from 2015 I did papers on Atlantis and the draining of the Sahara and all that stuff well at the same time in other words I didn't see I didn't see Typhon I could not see him all right and here he is right there and where is Atlantis it's right over here I was looking right over here for a couple years at this and it, dra it drained off here, it created the Cape Verde Islands, I believe. And, I, I, you know, I spend a lot of time here. There's a straits down here. So I, I'm, I'm not unfamiliar with this area. I spent a ton of time understanding the draining of the Sahara. And I never saw this fish. Never. Never. I never saw the dragon, ever. When I heard Look in Morocco, I came up here, I went, boom. Can't miss it. So this goes back a number of years, and, and and of course I did all the papers. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, these are papers from academia.edu. I was up on there. I put a bunch of papers up there long, long ago, and um, and this guy that was flying over the Atlas Mountains, that's where he was from academia.edu. And by the way, my best paper last it's been the last few months has been mud fossils and geology or something like that. Um, but I have a lot of papers up there. And that's what Paul is doing. He is writing all my papers. You know, I had, did one on, you know, my book was about Velikovsky. Now, don't forget, he, he, he's actually just putting my words on, like this. And he's throwing in some, some little bit of this and that, whatever. But all I want is my stuff to be seen. And, um, you know, he's doing the mud fossil stuff. He's doing my electron flood theory. You know, and I, I, I had published that paper apparently three, 
2019. So what, this is what he's doing. He's going back to my old works. But my point being is, in 2015, I was... This is about the time I saw this. And that was a message from God, too. I don't care what you say. That's what it is. Sorry to have to put it to you that way, but I have no other way to explain it, my friends. And when I went to find the giants... I told my wife one morning, I said, I, I just got a strange feeling. I have to go in the woods. Something's calling my name. And I'm, I swear to God, that's true. I am not lying about it. I went out. I had a hard time finding it. I found a few things, and I tried to show them to people. and Because I, I just thought, I didn't know what I was looking for. And all of a sudden, I found these giants, and I went, whoa. And that's when da -da -da, these things are for you to see and for others as a test. And, I mean, what can I say? And then all these sayings started dropping on me. You consider the time of your calling. You know, forget about the teachers. I mean, it was just on and on and on and on and on. And they just dropped out of the sky. I never read the Bible. I was not religious whatsoever. I'm not coming on to you to say do this or that, but I'm going to tell you one thing right now. From what I see, I think Jesus Christ is the only way out. And I, he, I, I, I think he was... A God as well. He could have, who knows what he could have been. He could have transformed himself, just like Ovid said they all could. And he could have come down here as a human being, saying, I'm going to come down here as part of the same thing as you guys. And it looked like I was born normally, but I, I really not. I'm, a, I'm a, a celestial creature, and I can do anything I want. They said when he was seven days old, I, I think it was seven days old, he stood up in his crib and said, I'm here from God for the salvation of mankind. And this is even in, I think it's, uh, um, uh, what is it? it's not the Quran, but it's, uh, it might be. It might be in the Quran, but it's in one of those, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, it is what it is. And you can, you can read about it in Apollodorus, which I probably read to you or will read. This is is serious and to avoid it just because it's too serious is a serious mistake I think I personally want truth and God said I have no greater joy than to see that my children walk in truth see this is what I was looking for Apollodorus 1.6.3. Apollodorus wrote in the early, not early, early BC, I think it's 180 BC, something like that. He was, he was far back there. Now, he's, and he wrote what the ancient ones wrote before him. He said, when the gods had overcome the giants, earth was still more enraged and had intercourse with Tartarus and brought forth Typhon in Sicilia, a hybrid between man and beast. And if we go into this, the text says, when they had hybrid between man and beast, in size and strength, he surpassed all the offspring of earth. As far as the thighs, he was of human shape and of prodigious bulk. He outtopped all the mountains. His head often brushed the stars. And then they go on about, he's got a hundred dragon's heads. I haven't found those, but I did find his dragon head. His thighs were like human thighs, but viper coils from down below. He was all winged and hissed, and his hair streamed on a wind, his head and cheeks and fire flashed from his eyes. Basically what I showed you. And he attacked all the gods, and they got scared to death, and they went and fled to Egypt. And being pursued, they changed their forms into those of animals. See, they could do anything they wanted with their bodies. That's the crazy thing here. This is this is uh, very, very strange. Now, Zeus pelted Typhon at a distance with thunderbolts and cut his neck. I showed this. Very easy to see. It's all exactly what they said. All right, his fire flashed from his eyes. He spit fire from his mouth. His eye was all red and fiery. Look at that. 
flashing back here. All right, we know about the venom. All right, down here, he cut his throat right there, right across. And that's why it's, it's running out blood here in the desert. And it's all this green is growing because blood makes things grow extremely green. It's, it's the nitrogen content primarily, but it's all the metals, blood metals and so forth in there that make everything grow, you know, really good. Now, this is the red blood getting out of there. It's red blood is what makes stuff grow. The black blood is the... Um, um, a magnetite and it's um, it's just a hard iron basically the red is all, stays fluid just about forever that's why you see all this runoff so what I'm saying is I you know I, I'm not sure this is a good idea to start screwing around with genes and trying to make things that aren't natural it, certainly in the embryonic stage, before they're actually developed into a creature that's supposed to be the creature it is. This is not, it's not natural, and I don't think it's a good idea. That, that's my opinion. So, I have spoken. <laughs> and I'm going to finish it up by this. Jesus said, whoever discovers an interpretation of these sayings will not taste death. And I think the interpretations of these sayings is that there's only thing that can live, any, the only way we can live together is in peace. There is no fighting, there's no fighting back. That's why he allowed himself to be shown to be so peaceful that he, he probably even forgave them for doing what they did to him. It's, uh, it's hard to believe anybody could could do that, but Jesus apparently did. Now he says, those who seek, and it's not everybody's going to seek, but those who seek should not stop seeking until they find. When they find, they will be disturbed. Absolutely. When they are disturbed, they will marvel. If you don't marvel about this stuff, you got no marvel in you. And then they will reign over all. And after they have reigned, they will rest. Alright, so he's saying, Look until you're marveling, and then you're going to be above the crowd. And here is the other thing he says, if you, if you look close enough, right here, whoever has come to know the world, you need to understand the world, you have to know the world, has discovered a carcass. Yes, whoever has discovered that carcass of that person, the world is not worthy. So get yourself to become above the rest and be like this because that said a carcass what does this one say Jesus said whoever has come to know the world has discovered the body yes they're all bodies whoever has discovered the body of that one the world is not worthy these are Gnostic texts some absolute devout Christians go crazy about this stuff I look at all the sources and I can see exactly what Jesus was saying. And I got a feeling he was, uh, he was able to, to just change his molecules just like that. And that's what he could just evaporate right through that uh, shroud of Turin. And he could, uh, I'm, you know, they all had this uh, ability to, to, to morph. It was called metamorphosis. It was by Ovid. He wrote about it, and they all did. And I think he was, was, uh, you know, I guess he came down in a, as a dove or something in the beginning. I don't know. I, there's so much to think about, and I, you know, I'm just scratching the surface. But I am the only one, really, literally, that is is talking about this in this deep of a realm. People just can't can't accept this, and they won't talk about it. So. I think it's time you have to own up to truth. If you want truth, you got to handle the truth.